A not so common call for us in EMS is for an insect bite. It does happen occasionally that someone will call 911 for a bite, but not all that frequently. There are a few that we uh, should know how to treat or what to do for. Um, black widow spiders are ones that are quite scary to people, but really are, I don't want to say harmless, but um, despite their name, don't usually cause death. In fact, there has not been a death from a black widow spite, bite, spider bite in this country in years or decades. Did a little bit of research, couldn't find the last reported case of one. But they can cause um, a lot of pain and discomfort and muscle spasms, typically in the abdominal region and back. A little bit of nausea with it. Um, and there's not a whole lot we can do for that pre-hospitally. Um, normally we can just do supportive care, wash the uh, bite site with uh, soap and water, that's a tongue twister, um, and transport, of course, maintain oxygenation and, and uh, any other supportive care. The good news is uh, it's not going to be fatal, um, and black widows are fairly rare, although I see a few of them around our house from time to time. Um, I even had the wonderful experience of being bitten by one once and had uh, a lot of muscle spasms in the abdominal area. Um, kind of felt like I was having six pack abs, but I wasn't having it. Um, just a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of um, rigidity to that area. Um, some people have some difficulty breathing with it. And of course we have to watch for anaphylaxis with this. Now a much more severe spider bite is the brown recluse spider bite. And brown recluse spider bites um, may not cause any signs or symptoms initially. In fact, a lot of times the person is even unaware that they were bitten by a brown recluse. Black widow spider bites sometimes cause a, a prin pick, prin pick, pin prick type pain, and uh, the brown recluse typically does not. So a lot of times they don't know they were bitten. And then a day or two later, they have kind of a, a red spot comes up and um, looks like any other sort of bite it ulcers out and continues to spread. And if this is not treated, this may require surgery to cut the dead stuff out and then uh, clean it up well and be on some pretty strong antibiotics. So of the two, the brown recluse is actually much worse to be bitten by than a black widow, but neither one of them typically are gonna cause sort of immediate life-threatening conditions. Um, something that worries me personally, because I do a lot of backpacking and hiking and just being outdoors are ticks. Now, ticks are not going to kill you, but many ticks carry um, some sort of disease with them, like Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, or, or there's a whole host of um, new or emerging diseases that we're finding with ticks that people are getting. And ticks, um, by design, are able to typically get into you, onto you, um, as unnoticed as possible, and um, like to go to sort of warmish and maybe moistish areas, kind of like scalp and groin and armpit, and then they will slowly embed their um, embed into you and start sucking the blood out of you. Now, many of these ticks are extremely small and you may not even know they have them on you. Uh, and those are the ones that we used to worry about the most, although any tick bite now, we're worried about something being transmitted. Now, as they suck blood out of you, they will get larger. We call that engorged. So if you see a tick on you, you want it to get it off you as quickly as possible or get it off the patient as quickly as possible. And you do that by using a pair of tweezers and you grab as close to the skin as you can and slowly pull up on the tick and hopefully it will let go and come out. Don't squeeze it. Don't, uh, you might be pushing blood and things back into the patient and uh, increase the risk of them getting one of the tick-borne diseases. Don't twist, um, don't jerk, just a steady, a steady pull with the skin tense up and hopefully they will let go. I know there are many other tips and tricks and ways to get ticks out of people, but that's the one that we, we recommend. Um, <clears throat> something that we have a lot of down here in this area are fire ants. And you step in a bed of these and you will know in a moment later because these things do hurt. Um, they typically will cause a about severe pain at the bite site, a little bit of blistering with it, um, turns red. Um, the thing with these is you may get a swarm of these on you or if a child falls in it, may, they may not realize how to get up and get away from it. So they can be bit 10, 20, 100 times. And we see a lot of anaphylaxis with fire ants. As far as fire ant bites themselves, there's just not a lot to do first aid wise. Wash it with soap and water. Um, typically not in the EMT practice to put Benadryl cream or hydrocortisone cream on it. But if they're not being transported, that's something you may want to recommend. Scorpions, which I, um, 
very rarely, if ever, have seen. I'm trying to think of the last time I may have seen a scorpion when I was out in the woods. Not often, although I know they are around. I've had plenty of people tell me that they see them in and around their house or under rocks. And normally the scorpion bite is, is just going to be painful. It's going to sting. Um, I hear it's very much like a wasp type sting. And there's just not much we do for it if uh, we're stung by one. Um, you may have some nausea with it, some difficulty breathing, um, wash the bite area with soap and water, and transport to the hospital. Now things like wasps and bees, um, those stings, again, they hurt. Medically, wash those soap and water, maybe put a little ice on it, and if they want to go to the hospital, that's fine, but watch for signs of anaphylaxis. Now bees leave their stingers in you. They're the only ones that do, so you'll want to find the edge of a credit card or something kind of sharp that way and scrape the stinger off the skin. Don't pinch it because you're just going to push the venom from the venom sac into the skin. So just scrape it off and then wash with soap and water. Watch for anaphylaxis. If any signs of anaphylaxis develop, treat them appropriately. Uh, if they have an EpiPen and oxygen and transport. So just a little bit about bites and stings for my EMT class.